So this is our new SQ3000 3D AOI optical inspection system with our new interface. Uh, we've designed this to be very similar to our SPI interface and to be cross-platform so your operators can easily go from one system to the other. Um, we have several modules in our software. We have an inspection module, defect review module, teach, settings, and tools. Uh, this is a HD 24-inch uh, display with touch capability, nice big buttons that are intuitive to the operator so they can see what the button, you know, they can look at it and understand what the button means. Um, I have a program loaded and an image here. Uh, a lot of questions that we get is why do we do 3D AOI as opposed to 2D? And the reason we like to do this, or the, one of the things that our customers have told us that we have to be able to detect is situations that in a 2D world, this looks like a good inspection, good component, but when you do a 3D inspection, you can get the height information, you can see that this component is lifted on one side. There might be a smaller component underneath of it, there might be a bent lead, something along those lines. Another thing that our customers have told us that they struggle with in the 2D world is a component like this. Again, in the 2D, looks very nice, but once you get the height information in there, now you can pick up subtle lifted leads that you couldn't see in the 2D environment. Or a situation like this component here, which to an experienced AOI operator or programmer, they would probably recognize that that part is upside down, but the 2D software has a hard time picking that up. Once you get the height information, you can see that all three of these leads are pointed up in the air, and it's very apparent to the software that this part is upside down. This machine is built on our SPI platform. We've been using this uh, gantry system for a few years now on our SPI systems. It's proven to be very reliable, very robust, and extremely low maintenance. The sensor, designed, assembled, manufactured at our headquarters in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, it's 100% self-contained, manufactured, uh, and calibrated in a clean room environment. Now we're using that to project our profilometry patterns onto the surface of the circuit board through telecentric optics from a top-down perspective. So we project a pattern and then we have our four off-angle cameras that take images simultaneously, capture all four quadrants, so you get a 360 degree view of the board to get accurate shadow-free height map information through those telecentric optics, so no matter where you're at in the focal plane, the size, the relative size of what you're inspecting stays the same. With these off-angle cameras, we're able to take all four of those images simultaneously, allowing us to be faster than our competition. We're able to fuse those images together with a sophisticated fusing algorithm and with using our proprietary MRS technology, which stands for Multiple Reflection Suppression Technology, we're able to reflect the secondary and, th and tertiary light reflected from your shiny components, allowing us to give you a metrology grade inspection at production line speeds. Uh, the gantry itself is linear driven, very reliable, very simple to maintain. The electronics that run the system is very simple. It's all right here in front, PLC controller, some servo drives for the gantry, electronics uh, power supplies, and a CPU unit that runs the system. So I'm going to reset the machine, reset the e-stop. Machine's going to home. I'm going to switch back to the inspect module. And I can either start the machine from this start button or I can simply hit the start button on the front of the machine. I'm just going to bring that panel in, clamp it, and it's going to start doing its inspection. It goes and finds the FIDs and is now taking an optimized path around the board to take images and height map information for all the components that are to be inspected. Now that it's done capturing images, it's still processing defect review is going to pop up and now we have defect review open so the system automatically switches to this review module it brings up a list of all your defects along the left here first one's highlighted which is the one selected here it shows you two images this is the article under inspection 
and it's got a red box rounding indicating that it's a failure. And this is your golden example. This is what it, the part is supposed to look like. We failed a text inspection, and it's basically a wrong component. You can see here that it's 680 as opposed to 750. So I'm going to classify that as a wrong component. Here is our SOT 23 component that is upside down that I pointed out earlier. Good component here on the right. You can see all the leads are down to the surface of the board, and these you can see are all pointed straight up in the air. It failed the body, and it failed all three of the leads. Let's see if I can scroll. There we go. So all three of the leads also failed. Next component. This one failed a body coplanarity test. And this is the first component that I cropped out to show you. This, this is the component that's that's lifted on the one side. You can see our golden image is, is uh, coplanar. In this one, the surface of the body is not coplanar with the surface of the board, indicating there's something wrong. Uh, the failure indicator here is, is this line, this red line showing you that it's sloped, and it's actually giving you uh, a threshold measurement of 100 microns, and this one is failing at just over 300 microns. That's the delta between the low side to the high side. Next component that failed is this QFP lead measurement. This is the one with the slightly lifted lead. You can clearly see that. This lead right here is lifted up off the surface of the board. We have a 50 micron threshold, and that one's measuring at 100 microns. And that's a delta measurement between all the rest of the leads and that lead that's an outlier. It's, it's 100 microns higher than the leads adjacent to it. The lifted lead. Once I've completed categorizing all these, my verification done button lights up. When I click on that, it'll switch back to the ins uh, inspect inspection module. What I would like to point out though is that if you uh, override the system and say that everything passes, when you hit verification done, the system's auto automatically going to start back up and continue inspecting the next panel. Since I have some failures here, verification done is just going to take me back to the inspection module and then the operator will be required to interact with the system to start it back up, remove the defective board, and then start the system back up. Programming our SQ system is extremely easy. Typically, we start with a CAD file that has your X, Y, theta locations for every reference designator, and also your part number and package information, a package name specifically, that uh, is unique for that package type on the board, so you can reuse the package for multiple part numbers. So. This, this one already has our CAD imported. I'm going to demonstrate training uh, one component and adding all the different inspections that you may want to do for that component. Here we have a QFP. To train it, it is as simple as taking this body, which or this box, which represents the body of the component. Just expand it out to the size of the component. Hit build. Go into the model editor. Here's what the system is seeing right now. I've got a black box with a little bit of the lead exposed showing all the way around it. So it'll be able to find that body real easily. Um, refresh my training set. I, I only have the one example to work with. So I'll inspect that one. It passed. I should probably adjust my search area and tolerance box here to more appropriate sizes for a QFP. So this, this box here represents my tolerance and this is my search area. So now that that's built, I can go to part define. We have our QFP, part number, and package. This is a QFP, so I'm going to select QFP leads. I'm going to grab my draw first lead tool. I'm going to zoom in on down here on lead one. And I'm just going to draw a box in around that first lead. Tell it how many leads we have on the horizontal and the vertical. And I can either type in my lead pitch or I have a lead pitch tool that I can just use to measure across from one lead to the next. When I hit preview, it draws all those leads in for me. I want to do a gap inspection to look for solder bridges or other 
defects in the area between the leads. I can draw that in, hit preview, and here we can see we've got all of our leads and all of our gap tests in there. I'm going to hit save. Here the software is asking, do we want this to be associated with just the package or override it and have it just associated with the part number? Since it's a standard LQFP 144, I'm going to leave it associated with the package. And we'll put those tasks in here. You see that it populates all those tasks in there for us. And since they're green, they're associated with the package. If I wanted to break that link and make it associated with just the part number, I can just select the lead, click that down arrow, and you can see that they all turn white, which indicates that they're not associated with the package anymore. They're associated with just this part number. So the next thing I would want to do is add a text inspection. So I'm going to go back up here to my top of my tree, select the text tool, and we'll pick something. If I had the data sheet, I'd probably pull up and find out what the significant digits are to inspect for here, but I'm just going to inspect for this 911 in the middle. We're going to inspect for any, any portion of this text, whatever's important for the part number. We want to know the manufacturer's part number for that. So then we just hit save. Now this one again, it's going to ask us, do we want this associated with the package or with the part number? Since this is a text unique to the part number, I'm going to override and add it just to the part. go back to train now and now we can see under IC702 we have all of these additional features leads and text and things so I'm just going to start at the top we've already trained the body so now we'll go in and train the text so we can do a little bit of fine-tuning get that box just around the text that we're interested in we'll hit build Go to the model. Here's our model. And if I build this and go to diagnostics, this is what the system is actually going to inspect for. It's what the system sees. Text pops out nice and bright. If I refresh my images from the panel and hit inspect, that one's done. It's inspecting that. We may want to increase our search area a little bit to allow for the part to move around a little bit. Part turns green and passes the inspection. Select our lead. Zoom in. I'm going to center that right on that first lead. Make it the size of the lead. Open up our search box just a little bit, we'll build that, we'll refresh our training set which will bring in all those leads, we'll inspect them. Now we have one example in our model, so we have a fair amount of them that are failing, but you can see about half are passing. So I'm just going to add, make sure this is lined up nice and add it in. So now with just two examples in there, we're locking in and finding every one of those leads. Now if we want to do an additional test on the lead, this we're doing a 2D AI squared inspection. If we wanted to do a lead measurement inspection, we can just add that in. Lead measurement, hit add, and OK. And now when I switch to the lead measurement. We're actually going to measure the height of the pin out here on the tip. Wherever we put this little box. So now we're doing a lead, we're doing an AI squared 2D inspect or a 2D inspection and also a 3D lead height measurement to detect for lifted leads and things like that. So again we're gonna go into our gap here, put that right in the middle here between two leads Build. now for gaps there's a couple of settings we like to change we like to use a gray scale get rid of this active area and 
Now with just one example, we only have two failures. This one looks like it might have a little, little bit of flux in between there, a little bit of debris. I'm not going to add that one. But if that was part of your normal variation, if you see that, you can add that in and train the system to accept that. So then it would only find gross failures where you have something possibly going all the way across. But with just two or three examples in there, we're getting really good discrimination, pretty high, very high confidence that that gap is good. And so we just trained a, a component. Body leads text gap, lead height measurement. If we wanted to do a coplanarity measurement to find uh, if it's tipped, we would go into the body. We'd click on model uh, body properties here. And we would hit the plus sign to add a coplanarity measurement. And that test is done. That's just a measurement. And it's based off the, uh, the dimensions of the body that we've already taught.